Let's look at a little structure. We've got an ins and an HKL. Normally there would be some other files. The, the files that contain some metadata about the data collection. Let's not worry about this right now. So all I need to do, I drag the ins file into Olex2. So what that does, it opens that ins file and it gives me straight away some information. So it's a copper data set to only one angstrom resolution. That's quite low resolution. Um, we've got an I over sigma of 14.7, so that's quite low as well. We can click on this and we can see the I over sigma as a function of resolution. It's it's not a very strong data set. And uh, we can also look at the R int. It's quite nice. And then over here, it starts going up into sort of 20% R merge. Um, the resolution is quite low and we can also look at that completeness, not resolution. Now. If I look at the file, it's called WIT, so that stands for what is this in the Rigaku world. So probably this was a two-minute data collection. So let's see what we get out of a two-minute data collection. So the first thing we need to do, we need to find our way around Olex2. So this is the latest dev version of Olex2. Um, you click on work. So this gives you the area where you can start working on things. And the first thing we need to do, we need to solve the structure, solve the phase problem. And there's some structure solution, solution programs available. So Shell XT is the one that, that is, you know, is highly recommended. And you can also use the built-in Olex2. If you don't see any of those other options and just have Olex2, then you need to link some crystallographic software to Olex2. There is some information about how to do this elsewhere. So let's just use it Olex2 solve. Just solve it with, what, with what's on board and we click the button here. So this hopefully solves the structure. Given that this is quite low resolution, it may not solve it. It didn't solve it. Um, so let's use Shell XT for this example. So Shell XT really is the, the sort of, uh, you know, go-to thing that, that solves almost every problem. So yeah, it solved this and it's got some atoms in here. So this one, uh, this is what uh, Shell XT does. It does the structure solution, which should normally give you just peaks, but it also does some atom type assignment that 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 is usually quite correct so we've got this here it's a molecule it looks like a six-membered ring like a, you know uh, everything looks fine and um, we are going to do straight away and do a refinement cycle so we just refine it so this is the solution and now we are just in the positions and also the ueq the size of these balls to um to to uh to fit our data. So we can look at this F ops F calc plot. So this is what we've calculated from our model and this is what the data tell us. So it looks quite good. So there's something going on. It's it becomes it looks like it might become a straight line when we are finished. And we can press Ctrl M at any point. That should give us the residual density map. And then we can already quite clearly see there is some hydrogen atoms here that, that clearly are missing. This is going to be a water molecule. So how do you proceed? Well normally I would um suggest you head over to the refinement stuff we just leave it might switch a zip file on so we always get a zip file coming through um we, we can hide this for now we click on this here oh first of all z prime is 1.25 so the formula right now is not quite right if you put in one then it would adjust with what's on the uh, <clears throat> on the thing if you click on the okay so it's c11n03 so this is what the formula is at the moment z prime does one independent molecule in the asymmetric unit. Okay, let's hit this sort of rugby shape thing and that makes these atoms anisotropic. And we can now really clearly see the hydrogen atoms. One thing that really intrigued me on the structure is, you know, it's quite clear that there are two hydrogens over here. So if I click H add in Olex2, it's probably going to add one hydrogen. And if you look at this from a chemist's point of view, you'd probably assume this is a phenyl ring, or rather pyridine ring. And uh, But actually, if you look at the distance, it's 1.516. So this is clearly an sp three hydrogen uh, carbon atom but it's uh, yeah it's it looks like it's it, it, it's um it looks like it should have one hydrogen but control m also to tells you quite clearly look at that so it's too much electron density assigned in this region and not enough in these regions so this one here really needs to be different so we can do this in a different way we can uh, first of all delete this one here one thing you can do, of course, you can just refine again and then these peaks should come back and these are really prominent now. So these two peaks are standing out. You can just select those and make them 
a hydrogen so we don't actually have hydrogen here because uh, I'm not quite sure because it never was put in the formula so you type name H so we put made up make, make them into hydrogen and refine this the R factor 7.26 down to 6.17 so you know they're, they're definitely real and control M now there's something wrong where these hydrogens are but these ones are looking quite good so there's no doubt that this is a CH2 over here now these are now freely refined if you want to constrain them then you need to head over to tools and somewhere down there um, is the hydrogen atoms and you can pick the sort of CH2 that that's the arrangement you want you select that and then click on that and that adds those hydrogens that's coded with a fix 23 you know you don't need to necessarily necessarily know what that is but this is a code that tells the computer program the refinement program how to deal with those hydrogens so they are riding on that carbon so they're taking all the parameters from that carbon that's just sitting on top and they're going with that parent atom okay Oryx, Oryx 2 is in a mode. This is why there's an orange box. We can hit the uh, escape key to get out of that. So um, this is all still red. So this one will always stay red because the resolution is just very low. This one will always stay red because the completeness is very low. But the rest of it we should be able to deal with. So this one tells us, okay, something is not quite right with that formula because we added the other, other hydrogen. So we click on that and that updates the formula to what's on the screen now we need to deal with some of these other things so let's just try some more refinement cycles this might rotate around so what we do we um, you know, check get a lot more cycles here and refine this again all x2 refine will actually stop when things are settled so you might have noticed this water molecule rotated around make the hydrogen bond here as you would expect and also the shift is now going towards zero, 4.39% in R1. Again, control M just to check. And that looks very, very clean. There's hardly anything left in this map. So this looks like a very nice finished structure, except of course, this is, wouldn't be publishable. That resolution isn't high enough and the completeness isn't high enough. So let's look at uh, that graph. So we have some maybe outliers. We can also look at info and bad reflections it doesn't really flag any outliers here um, so i think we can just leave it as it is so this is basically done yeah so we've got quite a low uh, data parameter ratio it's only six so that's also another reason why it wouldn't be publishable um, but we know what it is i think there's i mean there's no doubt about what this material is it's a good question where it came from but it, it's um it's that that's what it is we can head over to the report section. So this is now going to be fairly empty because we don't have any information. We didn't have a, a movie file. We didn't have, uh, you know, color and size and shape of the crystal. So normally this would all come out of files that are in that in that in that base directory that that you start with. So a lot of this would be pre-filled. But in Ulix two, you can then add information that is required for the end. We do have this little plugin. Um, where is it? We've got this little uh, plugin here, the SIF Plus. So SIF Plus gives you a view into the SIF file. That that I mean, if if there's any red lines, then this is going to cause trouble with the referee at some point. So these information, these bits of information here, they really need to be found and and, and filled in. Now, if we if we start with the SIF OD file in place, like if we start in the folder that that the photometer gave you. And, you know, don't move any files out, just copy that whole folder and work in that folder. Then Ulix2 normally extracts all the information that's required to get a clean SIF that's, that's ready to be published. So there's a lot of stuff missing here. Um, so you can also, when you've got, if you've got Platon installed, you can run a, a local Platon check SIF. So this came up in that window over here. Um, and that then extracts the problems and you can see a lot of problems here. That, that need to be dealt with. So this this will not go through. If if there is something you cannot change, then you can click on that, and it gives you this um, this window where you can actually then write uh, why this this issue is there. So you can just write your response and type it and save it in Olix Two. Will merge that in with your final SIF file. Right, so yeah, so this was just an intriguing little problem I came across. I thought I'll make this little video. It might be of interest to some. And thanks for using Olix too.